Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> What's up, dude? Yeah. Yeah, starting soon screen, man. I mean, it wasn't lying. It wasn't lying, dude. A uh, Dr. Pepper at 7 a.m.? What a breakfast, bro. What a breakfast, dude. I mean, I'm not going to hate on that. You do you, buddy. You do you. What's up? What's up, everybody? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good day to you. How are you? Um, yeah, I don't know, man. We're just, we're kind of preparing for uh, Scaretober, man. Scaretober's coming, starting this weekend. So we are, uh, we've got a, a whole slate of games ready to play, which will be um, Fear 3, the... Probably the Outlast games, Outlast 1 and 2. Then we're going to do Dead Space series uh, and Scorn. That's the play right now. That's the uh, that's the lineup that we have prepared for Scaretober. So, um, I don't know. That's uh, probably today through Friday. Just going to be Shatterline. Really, um, I don't know. We might do a little bit of City Skylines, but I'm really feeling the Shatterline stuff right now. So, we'll probably just be doing some chill FPS stuff. Uh, I want to get as much of that in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we start. Uh, uh-huh. Yep. That's the 1st of October, dude. That's the 1st of October. So, uh, Scaretober starts when October starts. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's Saturday, baby. That's when we kick it off. That's the day. That's the day. So, that's when it's happening. So I might actually end up having some shorter streams, um, not like super short, but maybe an hour or two shorter than normal the coming next coming few days, just potentially. I know, dude, me too. This year has gone so fast. Just to make sure that I'm getting everything prepared for those games um, and for Scaretober, make sure I've got all the alerts set up, got everything kind of ready to rock for whenever we, uh, we transition over into our Scaretober playthroughs and just want to make sure everything's good to go. Yeah, so... Um, but that's uh, that's the play. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so that's the plan. That's the plan, and um, I'm I'm excited. I hope you guys are. I'm uh, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rock. Last Scaretober was amazing. We had a great time, and I think that uh, it can only get better from there. Yeah, so it's gonna be a good time. So today, just more some uh, some more Shatterline. I'm uh, intrigued by what they're doing with the game. It's a lot of fun. We're going to uh, unlock Tier 4 weapons today, so we'll just keep playing around with that, having some fun, and uh, keep pushing towards Scaretober. Cool? Cool. Let's, uh, let's do what we do and get into this video gaming news segment. All right. Let's go. Let's go. See what we can get into. And we talked about all the Star Wars stuff yesterday. I mean, like they hadn't already been pushing just a ton of Star Wars content uh, in the entertainment industry as a whole, but also in video games. And now they're just basically telling everybody they're committed to releasing both a AAA and a not so AAA game every single year, if not maybe a little bit more than that. So that's what uh, that's what. Disney wants uh, Star Wars to become, moving forward. Just pollute the crap out of it, you know? Feels good. Netflix adds new gaming feature. Let's take a look at that. You should, uh, you should wash down that Dr. Pepper with a couple of donuts, bro. You know, maybe even a donut sandwich, you know, a couple of donuts, little, like a sausage patty in between or something. Just wash down that Dr. Pepper with a, uh, a breakfast, uh, donut sandwich. It'll be fine.
Uh, Game Pass is adding two new games to its latest updates. Take a look at that. Looks like the uh, the individual arrested for the G uh, the Rockstar hacks and the GTA Six leaks has uh, maybe apparently appeared in court following the arrest. Let's take a look at that. That's big news. Best new games coming in October. Let's take a quick glance at that and see what what uh, might be coming that we have maybe forgotten about or obviously Scorn's going to be in there. All right. But let's make sure we're aware of what's coming in October. Limited Run Games is auctioning a graded Castlevania game for how much? Yo, check that out. Wait, what? Oh, it's a Switch. Partnering with Collectible VGA to auction a graded convention exclusive copy of Castlevania Anniversary Collection on Switch. 100% of the sale will be donated to St. Jude. That's very cool. Uh, at about $500 right now after 30 bids. Ah, right, cool. Yo, if you guys are interested, didn't mean to do that. Bit bleak today. That's all right, though. Bit bleak. Go ahead and pivot. See what our other uh, search will bring up. Uh, Diablo 4 in-game beta invites are being sent out. We saw that this was uh, coming last week. And I kind of showed everybody how they could try to get in on this. But... Um, it seemed like really what they were looking for were more individuals that are very familiar with previous Diablo games and in-game content and potentially um, content creators, things like that. So at least that's what I remember reading anyways. But we'll see. We'll see. We've talked a lot about the Netflix stuff. We talked about it yesterday. Check out yesterday's news segment if you're interested. Okay, PS5 wins Games Console of the Gear and Creative Block Awards. Take a look at that. A multiverses update makes huge XP change adds Rick. Let's take a look at that. Uh, RE4 remake leak teases release for unannounced platform. Okay. Do Overwatch 2 accounts have to unlock old heroes?
We read about the uh, the Last of Us trailer that came out. Um, looks like they're doing a pretty good job with it, even down to the details of the watch um, scene in the the trailer that is like to a T resembling what what you see in the game. Um, and the clicker apparently that is in the trailer is is right on par with what you see in the game as well. And I think people are pretty excited with what's coming out uh, for The Last of Us from HBO. Um, take Two terminates publishing deal with People Can Fly. Let's take a look at that. A new God of War Ragnarok limited edition PS5 controller that you can pre-order. This is crazy to me. Look. A limited edition PS5 controller literally is going to have <laughs> no kind of like difference of a regular PS5 controller other than it's considered limited edition and is going to have like this, uh, this different paint scheme on it, you know? But it's going to cost probably 30 or 40 more dollars. Uh, Pokemon Go reveals October content plans. We'll take a look at that too. Let's stick with this and uh, get into it. All right. Multiverses update makes huge XP change. Adds Rick from Rick and Morty. A new update for Multiverses is officially set to release today that will, among other things, significantly change the amount of XP that players are required to earn and add Rick from Rick and Morty to the free-to-play video games roster of playable characters. The update itself and the release of Rick haven't happened quite yet, but developer Player First Games and Warner Brothers Games have gone ahead and released the patch notes detailing all the juicy changes. The highlight is certainly Rick Sanchez is joining up, but there are several other significant changes in this latest patch. Players should find that they go from level 3 to 15 on the character mastery track much slower following the patch as XP required to hit that level has been doubled. Also, Shaggy will now be the free character following the tutorial completion rather than Wonder Woman. Yeah. They've got some other things that have been done. There's cosmetics. And Twitch extension uh, updates. Um, some balancing changes to characters, lots of them actually. So, uh, that was the main news from that. But if you want to take a look at everything that's been done to the game there, then, uh, there's a lot of balancing changes, some other kind of, uh, general updates to uh, a few bug fixes, some cosmetic incorporations, new cosmetics and, um, Lots of, lots of character balancing, okay? RE4 Remake leak teases release for unannounced platform. A recent leak associated with Capcom's uh, upcoming remake of RE4 has teased a release for a previously unannounced platform. At this point in time, Capcom has confirmed RE4 will be arriving early next year on PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, and PC. And while it might seem odd that Xbox One platform isn't included in this lineup, it seems like Capcom could be announcing the game for this console at some point in the near future. Within recent days, a new listing for RE4 on Xbox One was discovered on Amazon. This version of the game seems to be compatible via Xbox's smart delivery program, which means that the Xbox Series X and Xbox One versions of the title are one in the same. Currently, Capcom hasn't confirmed that this leak is legitimate, but given that RE4 is available to pre-order on Amazon in this manner, it seems to be quite likely that this information is accurate. Yeah. In all likelihood, the announcement of RE4 for Xbox One should come about next month when a new RE showcase is being held. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll probably get some news on that here fairly soon. 
New Overwatch 2 accounts have to unlock old heroes. Overwatch 2 is set to release next week, and unlike the previous game, it will be free to play. Blizzard expects the change will bring in a lot more players, and the developer is looking at ways to improve what it calls the first-time user experience, or FTUE for short. In a new blog post, the company outlined its plans to avoid overwhelming those new to the world of Overwatch. Part of that FTUE plan means that new newcomers will have limited access to game modes and heroes from the start and gradually unlock them as they play. Blizzard says the goal is to make the game more approachable for those new to the series. Quote, new players begin with access to a limited set of game modes, heroes, and some other restrictions to onboard them more gradually. The first phase of our new FTUE rapidly unlocks all the game modes and the ability to chat in-game, and the second phase unlocks all the original Overwatch heroes over the course of approximately 100 matches. While some newcomers might be frustrated by these barriers, the FTUE approach is not just meant to help newcomers. It's also meant to be an imp impediment to those that would try to disrupt the overall experience. Blizzard hopes that by locking things like chat and competitive behind these barriers, it will make disruptive players less interested in the game, and it will also give Blizzard the chance to identify suspicious accounts before they enter the other game modes. Nice, yeah. Blizzard is quick to point out that with the exception of competitive, most of FTUE restrictions are lifted while in a group, so new players can team up with their friends at any time to play almost any game mode. Happy shift! <laughs> what's up buddy yo thanks again for those uh for that cheer man thanks again i appreciate it how are you how are you i'm great man i'm great i'm great we're hitting this news up and then we're gonna get into some shatterline man play some more shatterline today uh as we approach scare tober uh shatterline is going to probably take a a minimal a minimal play for us moving forward for the next month uh we'll we'll dive into it as we are able but uh we got a, a lineup of horror games to play for the next month so yeah, I want to try to get as much Shatterline in as I can right now. Yeah, how are you, buddy? How are you? Uh, are you looking forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Overwatch 2 is going to release on October 4th. So, we're talking like in about a week on Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, and PC. All right. So, Take Two has terminated its publishing deal with People Can Fly. Polish video game developer People Can Fly announced that Take-Two Interactive canceled the development and publishing contract for the studio's upcoming interactive adventure title Project Dagger. The Polish game maker, however, said that two, the two companies are parting ways on good terms. They may work with Take-Two on another project in the future. People Can Fly shared the news via its official website, stating that it received a letter from the GTA publisher terminating their contract for the Project Dagger, which the duo have been working together for approximately two years. For the Polish studio's words, it keeps the IP since Take-Two didn't make any efforts to buy it out and will continue to work on the project on its own. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I feel that uh, with Take-Two being the company it is, if they, if, they, if they saw something significant in that development process worth investing in, they would have stayed on board or they would have tried to buy it out. The CEO of People Can Fly, uh, Wojciechowski, uh, I might have butchered that, mentions that the title is still in pre-production, hence they have a lot of wiggle room to change the project as they see fit, and their immediate goal is to migrate to Unreal Engine 5. UE5 is incredible. Uh, the Polish video game entity is working on seven different projects at the moment. Gemini with Square, Bifrost and Victoria, these two will be self-published by People Can Fly. It also has the project dubbed Red, but this one is in the concept phase. The studio is also developing two other projects in VR technology, one called Green Hell VR, and another new project based on one of the IPs from the group's portfolio. Uh, People Can Fly is a studio behind Outriders, uh, an online co-op uh, co shooter that failed to make a profit. Yeah. Outriders looked okay, but everything that I saw from Outriders, uh, and they just had a pretty big DLC come out for it, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Or is it coming out soon? I think... I think it released not too long ago. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah, Unreal Tournament, dude. Yeah, yeah, this came out in June. Came out in June. The uh, the DLC, which is World Slayer. Um, 
I don't know. I, I didn't really hear too many reviews about the uh, the DLC. What I did hear about Outriders, because I didn't play it, what I did hear about Outriders was that while it was okay, it it felt very repetitive. Um, and it, you know, it had this whole entire, like, end game kind of grind system where you're t- trying to, you know, keep going into these kind of raid scenarios, uh, doing PVE stuff and uh, grinding out different types of gear and, and stuff like that. And it, to a lot of people, it just, it felt very, very repetitive and people lost interest from what I remember. Uh, new God of War Ragnarok limited edition PS5 controller is up for pre-order. I'll hold my comments for a moment. Um, latest PlayStation Limited Edition PS5 DualSense controllers themed after the upcoming game God of War Ragnarok with an icy blue and white color scheme and a Baron Wolf insignia etched into the controller's touchpad. The two animals represent Kratos and Atreus and appear to be in the game itself. Pre-orders for the controller open up today, September 27th. That was yesterday. With a release on November 9th. At the time of writing, you can reserve one of the following retailers priced at $75 U.S., Additional retailers will be added as they become available. I guess that's not all that much more than what I, I was uh, than what a PS5 dual the dual sense controllers are going for. Just the regular controllers, right? What are they like? Sixty bucks, I think. So it's like fifteen dollars more. Um, yeah, Ragnarok releases on. Uh, PS5 and PS4 on November 9th, if you were not aware. If you've been hiding under a rock, (laughs) Ragnarok, uh, if you've been hiding under a Ragnarok, um, the game releases on November 9th. Yo, random mode time. So, um, cool. Cool. If you're interested, I'll throw this in chat if you need to take a look. I think, uh, you know, it's wild. We just saw, like, a new Xbox controller come out. It literally is just the same as every other old Xbox controller, but it costs, like, $30 more because it's got some new color scheme. It's like some, you know, digital camo looking, you know, and it's like, it's not even like a collector's thing. It's just, it's wild to me that, that that's, apparently people will pay that, you know, people will pay that. For for just a color scheme on a controller, you know. <laughs> I've been hiding under my Xbox. Have not heard the, the hiding under your Xbox rock. Right on. Well, you know what's funny about that? You bring that up. You know, the CEO of uh, Xbox, Phil Spencer, has actually been quoted as saying that the uh, the game right now that that he is most anticipating is God of War Ragnarok, which is obviously. A PlayStation proprietary game. The more you know. I think that's one of the reasons that uh, I am am, uh, such a fan of of Phil Spencer's. The more uh, I hear about that individual and the more quotes that I um, become privy to and and just... uh, his way of thinking in regards to the gaming industry is that it, it just leads me to believe that at uh, Phil Spencer's core, uh, he's a video game lover. He's a very good businessman as well, uh, obviously, but he is a video game lover and uh, he's not afraid to show it, you know. Pokemon Go reveals October content plans and new shiny Pokemon. October is just around the corner, and Pokemon Go players can expect to see a lot of new content throughout the month. Developer Niantic has revealed a few details about those plans, including a shiny Pokemon, making its debut in Pokemon Go. (laughs) Though though special research breakthroughs next month, uh, through, excuse me, through special research breakthroughs next month, players will get the chance to encounter uh, Sejinia. And for the first time, it could be a shiny version. The company also provided dates for the month's biggest events, though we won't have specific details until we get closer to the actual dates. Players can expect the following events in October. Um, Evolving Stars, Mega Gyarados Raid, 
uh, Festival of Lights, October Community, Halloween. Ooh, dude. I bet there's going to be haunters everywhere. I love haunters. And Safari Zone. Uh, starting today, players can expect to see the uh, Veltil in five-star raids, while Mega Lopunny will appear in Mega Raids. On October 8th, Xerneas, the other major legendary from Pokemon X and Y, will return to five-star raids, while Mega Manectric will appear in Mega Raids. Mega Bennett will begin to appear in Mega Raids starting October 20th and lasting through November 8th. In five-star raids, players can expect the altered form of... Is that Giratina on October 20th? Before the game switches over to the Pokemon's origin form from October 27th through November 8th, this month's raid hours will focus on uh, Veltel, Xerneas, and Giratina's altered form. Players can also expect the following spotlight hours. Uh, Niantic's press release notes that players that bring their buddy Pokemon to the Shupit Spotlight Hour will witness something special at the beginning and end. Though no additional details were provided with all these festivities and the game's current Fashion Week theme, seems Pokemon Go players will have plenty to keep themselves busy. If you're interested, if you're a Pokemon Goer, there's uh, all that information within that article right there in chat, okay? D4, Diablo 4 in-game beta invites are being sent out as we speak, all right? Uh, the first wave of D4 closed in-game beta invites has reportedly been distributed. Diablo 4 players on Resetera and Reddit began receiving invites to the game's latest testing phase on Tuesday. Invited users can sample a range of content that will be available after players complete the game's campaign. Uh, this includes Nightmare Dungeons, Whispers of the Dead, Fields of Hatred, Paragon Boards, and the game's newest feature, Helltide. Quote, we have decided to focus on the closed beta of Diablo 4's in-game offerings for a few reasons, Blizzard said last week. The full story of Lilith's return to Sanctuary is not something we would like to spoil prior to release. Players will experience a post-campaign Sanctuary during the closed in-game beta. Also, for many, the in-game is their favorite aspect of Diablo. We want to ensure it feels satisfying. And with no shortage of challenging variety to experience across many, many Demon Slaying gaming sessions. Closed in-game beta will be playable on PC, Xbox Series X, S, and 1, PS5, and PS4 consoles with cross-play and cross-progress for all platforms supported. Blizzard had said that a large but limited number of beta invites will be distributed to players that have recently spent significant amounts of time playing the in-game experiences of Diablo 2 Resurrected, Diablo 3, and Diablo Immortal. D4 is planned for release in 2023, and public testing phases will launch early next year. Yeah, more than 40 minutes of Diablo 4 footage was seemingly shared online earlier this month. We saw a little bit of that, yeah, and we saw their microtransaction shop within that. Um, let me just show you real quick, okay? Let me let me see if this gives you an idea of how I feel about how I used to feel about Diablo. Okay. Yo, Dots, what's up? So, what's funny is I just had this stuff sitting here because uh, I recently went on vacation. And um, and look, man, I mean, these are not just boxes. Look, I mean, I've got everything that came with these games still in the boxes. Down to uh, Internet for Everyone from AT&T. <laughs> everything that came in these boxes originally is still in these boxes, man. Um I love I love my my video game. Um, Blizzard. I'm actually in the in the the process of like boycotting Blizzard. <laughs> I uh, I won't play their games right now. Unfortunately, um, everything that I have found out about how mismanaged their company has become, and everything else that I have found out just about how it's not the company that I fell in love with. You know, let me just say that. Um, they are definitely absolutely focused on 
just money. That's it. They don't care uh, really about the fans creating, you know, quality games it, uh, for people anymore. As far as I'm concerned, it's just all about money. And um, I think Diablo Immortal was really the uh, the 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 final the final blow for me. Final blow for me. How do you know? What do you mean, how do I know? About, like, the mismanagement and all that stuff? So, the, I mean... I mean, that, that is also something that uh, I would feel like if if you're not aware of of all the lawsuits and um, everything that, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, um, over the past few years, it has come out that uh, Blizzard has literally had some actual terrible um, stuff going on within their company in regards to um, all all different kinds of mismanagement, um, toxic workplace situations, um, misogynistic kind of stuff, um, sexual misconduct, um, all, all kinds of different stuff going on within that company. They've been sued left and right. Um, it's, uh, it's rampant. It's rampant. Uh, and which is why whenever it came out that Microsoft was um, prepared to purchase Well, I think that it's good to not trust all news sources, but yeah, I mean, okay, that's not a bad way to address things. Uh, there are a lot of news sources that are are uh, absolutely going to twist things to be their agenda. We've talked about that a lot in this uh, community as well, but um, it is public it is public knowledge. It, it you can I mean you can go to the court system. You can get the documents that actually show that <laughs> Blizzard has uh, lost lawsuits against them for um, this type of of stuff. Right? They've been sued by um, like organizations for this mishand like like government organizations for their mishandling of of business practices, um, taking care of their people, things like that. So it's not just stuff that has come through like speculation. This is stuff that has, okay, dots. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you can go research it all you want. This is, this is um, public accessible information. The company has been um, they've, 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 Like I'm pretty sure it was the state of California had done um, numerous investigations and they've been um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it was due to their their internal investigation of like Blizzard and the management of what has or, or their their handling of management and personnel within the organization. I mean, they literally have had to pay all kinds of fines and things like that. Well, and I mean, that's something that I talk about a lot too. I mean, um, and the thing is not everybody that works at Blizzard is a bad person, right? Um, and that's not lost on me. And I've talked about that a lot too, but, and that's what video games are supposed to be, right? Video games are supposed to be something that's fun for, for people. Um, I think that's where it's really hard for a lot of individuals, Dots, is um, are the games fun? Yeah. But um, whenever whenever you get into that situation, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of like turning a blind eye and... Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I, yeah, dude. Yeah, I can't, dude. I can't. I can't explain that one. What's up, buddy? I mean, this is the thing, Dots. Um, it, it, for me, and and look, man, this is just me, right? Um, right, yeah, and Chef, I, 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 I think you're exactly right. Um, you're exactly right. And um, for me, I, I, I'm, I'm just personally at the point where I don't feel like I can support that company anymore, whether it be in a monetary fashion or um, even just contributing to their player base at all dots. That's just me um, for where my moral compass lies and, and my, uh, you know, ethics and, and things like that when it comes to being a uh, very passionate video game player and, and a lover of the industry as well. Uh, everything that I know about the company, and this is coming from somebody that obviously I showed you these boxes. I grew up being in love with Blizzard. But it's not the same company that I fell in love with when I was a kid. They've changed. And um, there's just a lot of stuff about the company that I find to be, you know, basically disgusting. And um, when you look at Diablo Immortal and what they did with the uh, microtransactions within in the game to make it like, just so significantly skewed to pay to win. And, and um, you know, that's the kind of thing that I feel is just absolutely wrong with the uh, gaming industry nowadays, right? And therefore, uh, I just don't feel right supporting that company, right? So, um, while, yeah, uh, obviously, there are going to be a lot of good people that work at that company, and um, everybody's going to have their own opinion. And obviously, you know, Games are supposed to be fun. And in my opinion, whenever you see a company that you know is being run poorly, mismanaged, has a uh, track record of years on years that it has come to light that they've been um, treating their employees poorly and they've been incorporating bad kind of techniques within their games, um, like pay to win and stuff like that. I just personally don't feel like I can support that company. I don't care if a game's free to play. Um, it doesn't matter to me. I, I just don't feel, I don't feel right supporting them in a monetary fashion or as a, a, a player base number for them at all. So that's where I'm at with it. And until I see change, I'll continue to, to uh, have that stance, you know? So, um, I don't know. That's just me, man. That's me. That's just me. But as far as, as far as you're talking about with the news and stuff, that's not a, a bad approach to take, buddy. Um, uh, it's not a bad approach to take to be um, hesitant to absorb any kind of information that's fed to you from news sources as tried and true, Right. Um, I think more people should have that mindset, but there's absolutely something to be said for, um, not dismissing all news information as just fluff, right? And a lot of this stuff with Blizzard has been proven to be true. Okay. So, um, I would say do your due diligence, right? Educate yourself. Uh, we've we've come across a lot of it in this new section before, so I'm or in this channel, this community before. I'm not going to rehash it out, but I would say do your own um, research. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever it is, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, uh, it's not lost on me that these are businesses, right? Uh, that's your prerogative. That's your prerogative, buddy. Um, but for me, I it, um, again. It, for me and the gamer that I am, um, it doesn't feel right to me. Cool. Right on. That's your prerogative, man. I won't. I won't do it. Um, this is the thing we've talked about quite often. Um, and this is why things won't change in the industry. Right. Um, because it would take a united front of people kind of standing up to the 
bad uh, methodologies and techniques that gaming developers continue to implement in their games that are uh, impacting the industry in a negative way, right? I know you do, Wick. I know. And unfortunately, there aren't enough people that see it as... Um, see it in a light of needing to... It's too hard to get everybody on board with uh, kind of going, you know, we're not going to support this anymore until you change, right? So... Um, look, I don't think that, I don't think that, I mean, Microsoft has had their issues too, gamer. Microsoft has had their issues too. You can go back and look. Most big corporations have had some former or, or uh, no, 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 some no, no. former fashion of, of mismanagement. Here's the thing. I think that, um, <laughs> so I wanna, wait, I don't want to try to talk over that. He tried it. <laughs> <laughs> so, we actually read an article earlier in the year talking about how Microsoft in the past has dealt with these these types of issues and, and it might be a good thing that they come in and buy this corporation because they have experience with trying to change culture within organizations, even their own, due to... Um, their own history, right? So, I mean, ultimately, man, uh, what I would probably do is use a different operating system. My PC is not a Windows built PC. It just has a Windows operating system on it. So in that, I mean, in that fashion, if, if it got to a point where I ultimately um, saw Windows uh, or saw, saw Microsoft as being a, an organization that I could no longer support. And I'm not, uh, you know, I've never been just head over heels about Microsoft or anything, but I would probably switch over to using something like Linux, dude, you know, as my operating system. I'm just more comfortable with Windows. So uh, that's an easy answer for you. I wouldn't have to boycott PC gaming. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, there's, uh, plenty, you know, you can play PC games on, on Linux operating systems very easily. So that's a way around that. But we'll move on. I loved Diablo for a very long time. We get into this discussion all the time and I, you know, it, I just, personally for me, until I see change in Blizzard, I just, I won't go back to playing their games. I just won't do it. As much as it hurts, because I really want to play Diablo 4. I really do. I want to play it very badly, but I won't do it, you know? And um, it's just because of, of how I feel about the industry needing to change. I agree, Happy Chef. I agree. But not everybody feels that way. And that's, you know, I can only do my, I can only do what I feel is right by me. You know what I mean? I, you guys, you know, I mean, this is, this is what I love. I love video games, not just playing them, but I'm very passionate about the industry. And if I, if I find out things about a, a company that I find to be, very uh, distasteful. Um, and for Blizzard, I'm, I've been uh, exposed and privy to information that is through and through with what they are doing in their games as well as, you know, what they're doing in their company um, for quite a while now that just leaves a very bad taste in my mouth and, and makes me not want to support them. So I won't. And it's easy, it's as easy as that. Other people are going to continue to do that because ultimately what video games are at the end of the day is something that's supposed to be fun. 
And um, if people are going to continue to have fun in their games, they're going to continue to play those games. So it is what it is. <laughs> Moving on. PS5 wins Games Console of the Year in Creative Block Awards 2022, plus our best game design, UI, UX, and VR winners. Uh, it's day three of the Creative Block Awards 2022, and we turn our attention to the gaming category. In this gaming category, the Creative Block Awards 2022, our judges voted on a number of categories with entries nominated by you, our audience. We've covered video games on Creative Block for many years, but we do so in our own way. Looking at how games are made as much as played, read our guides to the best laptops for game development and the best laptops for 3D modeling for a better idea of our approach. Or learn the skills needed to succeed in our features on game design. Um, so, notoriously hard to buy, Sony's PS5 remains the brand and console to beat even as Xbox Series X and Switch close the gap in terms of sales. PS5 offers the power you'd expect from a cutting-edge console, but also delivers unique user features such as the DualSense controller's haptics and 3D audio support. Also, we love the uh, inventive blade design that is both visually startling, but also serves to cool the console. Design and gaming come together in P uh, the PS5. Hmm. Requesting dark mode, well... I mean, the websites. <laughs> I'll see what I I'll see what I can do. Look, I mean, if you guys have suggestions, um, then please feel free to throw them in the uh, the Discord uh, suggestion channel because um, I will. Uh, that's the easiest place for me to go back and and take a look at those things. They get lost in chat. You know what I mean? So. You got a suggestion you want to see me implement? I'm fine with that. Um, you know, but don't forget the uh, the the best place to throw that stuff. Um, remind me every day. Okay, cool. Thanks, thoughts. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, video game design, Elden Ring. It was a. Uh, um, Elden Ring met the hype and expectation when it finally released earlier this year. Mm. From software, spiky game design and tough challenge was placed upon a vast open world, and this changed our experience of sandbox game design. Approachable but challenging, epic but personal, Elden Ring remains a game like no other. The creative gothic visual design remains a draw to a stunning game. Uh, unless you played it on PC. <laughs> Is that a threat? <laughs> Best VR game. By the way, uh, PlayStation is actually rolling out their PSVR 2 here pretty soon as well. Uh, playing F122 in VR is entirely optional, but you can play the entire game in VR on PC using some of the leading headsets, including Oculus and Vive. Proves a refreshing and intense addition uh, to the long-running racing series modes and brings to life the power and speed of F1. EA has really embraced VR in the last two years, beginning with the excellent Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Experiences like F1 prove how F1 can and should be integrated into gaming. Wait, bloody knife in hand. No, dude, that's me. Look. Hold on. What are you talking about? Yo, what the crap? Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, they've got some other stuff in here that's rated. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you guys can take a look, okay? Go ahead and take a look at these if you're interested. I knew who you were talking to. Netflix adds new gaming feature. Netflix continues to support video games on its service and with the recent announcement that, for example, it is starting its own in-house game studio. It also continues to add more and more new mobile games to the platform with new titles arriving every single month. To top it all off, Netflix today announced that it's rolling out a new gaming feature for everyone, personalized game handles. Oh, okay. Basically, similar to how folks can have an Xbox Gamer Tag or a PlayStation Network ID, Netflix now allows subscribers to set a specific game handle per profile that will appear across all Netflix video games. Seems like, as with a typical opening of handles on a new service like this, there's already been a bit of digital land rush and iconic names like, for example, Neo Trinity and Morpheus are already taken. 
This allows anyone playing Netflix video games to associate players on leaderboards and the like with a specific user. Uh, the announcement makes it sound like this is only the start of new gaming features on the subscription service for now. However, anyone playing games on Netflix can set up their personalized gaming handle in one of two ways, dependent on whether they're using an iOS or Android device. Here's the process direct from Netflix itself. Um, they give you the, uh, the list here. I'll throw it in chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. That escalated quickly, didn't it? Yeah, agreed. I was just trying to like lighten it by throwing the, the emote in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so if you're not aware, Netflix has about 30 games on their platform at this point. Uh, you have to be a subscriber, but you can access all their, their games on the uh, their app, right? Uh, there are no ads or anything like that. They've got a few notable titles. The most recent one is Oxenfree, which is supposed to be an absolutely great title. I haven't played it. But it's supposed to be very nice. And uh, a bit of an ominous kind of thriller vibe to it. A um, bit of a, some spookiness. And... Um, by the end of the year, they're supposed to have about 20 more games out, right? So um, we'll keep track. Microsoft X, uh, updates its selection of Xbox Game Pass games, adding a new day one game and giving an early access title to its full release. Again, this is one of those things that's come out recently. Uh, you know, Xbox has been doing this for a long time with their Game Pass, yeah? So Game Pass has been doing day one game releases uh, or Xbox has been doing, Microsoft has been doing day one game releases for Game Pass for a long time. And PlayStation recently came out and, and basically said, we have no plans to ever do that. No plans to ever do that. With their subscription service of PS Plus that they recently rolled out in June to try to compete, you know, with what Xbox has done here, um, that's one of the big contrasts that you'll find, you know. Um, don't have game uh, Xbox Pass by keys. Add the full game. Won't affect. No, no, no. This is this is just for anybody that has a subscription service. Dots. Don't worry. Uh, Microsoft has updated a selection of Game Pass games today by adding a new day one game as well as the full version of a title that was previously available to play through the Xbox Game Preview program. The Game Pass subscription service is updated multiple times per month, ensuring that subscribers regularly have new games to check out. Tuesday, September 27th may be an especially exciting day when it comes to new Xbox Game Pass games for September 2022. Day one releases are always a big deal as they give the Game Pass subscription service incredible value. Uh, both of today's offerings could technically be considered day one releases, even though Grounded has technically been available in early access for quite some time. Grounded, yeah. Um... The two new games added to Xbox Game Pass of September 27th are the aforementioned Grounded. If you're not familiar with what Grounded is, it's like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, right? You play as like a, a miniature person. Uh, you got shrunk. You're like in the backyard fighting off insects and trying to do base building and stuff. A first party Xbox game developed by Obsidian and Moonscars, a new 2D Souls-like. And Moonscars, a new 2D Souls-like. We've seen this. Um, there are no reviews for Moonscars at the time of this writing, but Souls-like fans may want to check it out regardless. Um, yeah, for those unfamiliar with the game, Grounded is inspired by Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, casting players as children who are shrunk to minuscule size, forced to survive the wild dangers of the backyard. Players have to work together to build shelter craft weapons and armor, and find supplies to aid them in their journey to solve the game's mysteries and defeat the insect monsters that are attempting to eat them. You remember that movie? Yeah, me too. Uh, Grounded and Moonscars are the latest games added to the Xbox Game Pass lineup, but they aren't the last new titles coming to the service this month. September 29th, we'll see the addition of Let's Build a Zero, as well as the PC version of Valheim. Yo, that's incredible. If you've not played Valheim, what a great title. Um... 
So it is coming to Game Pass, right? The PC version. And they are currently working on rolling out a console version of Valheim. So it's supposed to hit Xbox in the near future. And when it uh, the console version is ready, it, that will be out on uh, Game Pass as well, from what I understand. You have not played Valheim? Valheim is good, dude. Valheim is, is good. We just played, uh, we played it here recently. Uh, we had uh, Community in on it. It was Pinky and Psyche and Varya and, man, who else played on that? Uh, it was really good. So good. You, they've done such a great job in that game of physics with the base building. Um, you actually have to have a really good foundation. Uh, things will fall apart if it's if it's not built um, to be very sturdy. You know, it's kind of wild. It's really, really good. Um, as well as just progressing through the game and and getting the different biomes and stuff. It's it's a very very neat game. Uh, but it can be absolutely unforgiving and brutal too. So be very careful. <laughs> be very careful. All right. Um, so GTA 6 leaks uh, reported Rockstar Games hacker appears in court following the arrest. So, yeah, if, if you haven't been keeping up, you know, um, they arrested a 17-year-old in uh, or around London for being the main individual involved in the hack of Rockstar and um, basically gathering all this, uh, I mean, they got GTA 6 game code. They got a bunch of in-development videos of uh, footage of the game being made, stuff like that. The recently arrested 17-year-old accused of multiple counts of hacking has appeared in court. Last week, over 90 videos of GTA 6 leaked online with the leaker claiming that it was a result of a hack on Rockstar Games. The, re the videos revealed a ton of info about the game, such as the two protagonists, the setting, new mechanics, missions, and more. Needless to say, it was a historic leak for gaming. Rockstar responded to the leak, noting that it doesn't expect it to have any long-term impact on the development of GTA 6, but it isn't a, an insignificant act either. The leaker claimed to have been responsible for a hacker for a hack on Uber as well, and the ride-sharing company noted it was working with the FBI on an investigation into the matter. Last week, London police confirmed it had arrested and taken a 17-year-old teen into custody on suspicion of hacking, though did not specifically connect it to the Rockstar game situation. However, many had speculated and reported that the hacker was a teen living in the UK, so it drew a lot of eyes. As reported by Bloomberg via Kotaku, the suspect appeared in a specialist youth court in London and pled not guilty to computer misuse and guilty to breaching his bail conditions. The judge has moved the case to a higher court where it will be heard at a later date. London police also confirmed to Eurogamer that the teen is being held in a youth detention center right now. Um... Hmm. I I am guessing Yo, happy chef, cool man Oh yeah, I'll be on for a while today I always am, man Or almost always anyways Yeah, yeah, yeah Thanks buddy, yeah Yeah, we'll see you We'll see you in a bit Um I, I am under the impression that that this this individual was probably doing a a fairly decent job of covering their tracks. Obviously, not good enough, but I would assume they were doing more than just using a uh, VPN. <laughs> they had already gotten away with doing some uh, notable hacking uh, in the past. And it was this more recent one where something went awry and, and led to them getting um, caught up, right? So, um, as someone who has dealt with not super intensive, but I have been exposed to an amount of network defense, network offense kind of um, situations. Um, it's more than just VPN stuff that you need to be incorporating. And I'm guessing this individual, <laughs> um, probably was, but who knows? Who knows? 
As of right now, it's unclear where things will go from here. It's also worth noting that the case has still not been specifically named Rockstar, has not specifically named Rockstar Games as one of the things the team is suspected of hacking. So that should keep, uh, be kept in mind. As the case progresses, we should learn more about the specifics surrounding the investigation and what exactly the team has been accused of doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, find it stupid to hack something and go public and post stuff you stole. Uh, I don't think that the individual went public. They just tried to uh, leak the info. They didn't necessarily go public, right? Um, going public is, you know, basically going, hey, this is me, and I got all this information. I'm the one that did it. They didn't come out and say that. Um, so they didn't go public. They got caught. What they did was, well, there's a difference in, in what you stated, though. What you stated was hack something, then go public. They didn't go public. <laughs> they leaked the information. Going public with it, uh, you know, it is kind of, being like, hey, this is me. This is what I've got. This is, you know, who I am. This is what I've done. Um, I guess that's the way I took it. That's the way I took it, I guess. But, I mean, what other reason would they go grab that information for? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, obviously the internet... The, the, the World Wide Web is public space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this is, uh, this is a different, this is a different time, right? And, um, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm not thrilled that they did it. Um, you know, I'm not even a big fan of Rockstar, um, but I, I'm not a fan of how hard it is for developers to, keep development processes in house nowadays, um, and just let them, because really what it does, it creates a huge separation between us as, as the, uh, consumer and the lovers of what they develop for us, it create it, the more this happens, the more it creates a, a division between the developer of the games and us as the game lovers and the consumers of the, the product, right? Where they no longer, you know, it makes developers much more hesitant to want to engage with us, whether it be, you know, a hack like this that force the, forces their hand into having to divulge certain kinds of information or, you know, an insider getting um, certain kinds of information and leaking it or them trying to open lines of communication and then having to deal with toxic people, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cyberpunk. I'm <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to think about CDPR to be honest. Um after I mean we just finished playing The Witcher 3 and and while it was it was an okay experience, there was a lot wrong with that game too. There was a lot of bugs and I, from what I understand when it was released, uh Witcher 3 was a hot mess. And, you know, everything I know about Cyberpunk as well, I haven't played it, but Cyberpunk is it was an absolute crap show on release two. And I'm just so tired of developers feeling like they can just release games like that and then get away with fixing it after its release. I'm so tired of that mindset. I want developers to get back into the uh, mindset of the way it was before the internet was such a prevalent thing. Before they had the ability to just patch everything, you know, um, if there was something that went wrong. 
even though I know games are a much larger scale kind of situation now, they're, it's much more intricate. There's a lot more going on. And that's why the internet's such a great thing. Um, but I, I would want developers to get back into the mindset of a game needing to be very fleshed out and, and very polished on release rather than being a hot mess and go, oh, we'll just fix it after we release it. I'm so tired of that mindset. Um, it makes it makes us as the consumer feel duped all the time. It makes us feel like uh, we can't trust developers. You know, uh, I absolutely hate it. And yeah, you're not wrong, Dots. I mean, they are they are doing better. But I mean, one of the one of the more recent things that's happened with Cyberpunk it really makes. Uh, me not thrilled with CDPR as well is that, you know, they've come out with this, uh, this new huge expansion for cyberpunk and it's not even going to release on previous gen consoles. Whenever one of the big quotes they had on the release of the info of the news about the expansion was that one of their main, uh, what was their main developers or, or CEO of, of CDPR, whatever was like, now people will be able to experience the game the way it's supposed to be played, you know? Um, and it's like, well, not anybody that, that owns the game on previous gen consoles, you know? Like, what was... I, I just don't understand that that mindset. You know, you release the game on all these consoles, but then you're releasing this huge expansion and not gonna... But it's only being developed for modern consoles. That is such a weird play that's such a weird pivot to me by that company they've already said that uh i'm pretty sure i already read where they're not they will not make this uh cyberpunk multiplayer i i'm pretty sure i read that in a news article <laughs> but who knows that could change that could change i think uh the big thing here with this uh article is you know I think you're, I mean, you're absolutely right. The, this individual leaking this information is ultimately, I think, what led to them getting um, arrested, right? So it, it ended up biting them in the butt, man. And and what was the what was the point, you know? I mean, what, what were they trying to get out other than just notoriety? Is that it? But, I mean, people do a lot of things that I don't understand the reasoning behind. So I could speculate all day long as to what the reasoning was or, or the logic, their logic was behind uh, doing this. And uh, I, I don't think that I would ever understand, you know. Yeah. All right, last article I have, guys. Uh, if you have anything else to add for us to talk about in regards to video gaming news, then let me know in chat and we'll discuss it before we move on to some Shatterline for the rest of the day, okay? Uh, best new games coming in October. Let's take a glance at this. Gotham Knights. So Gotham Knights is coming. We know we know about that, right? PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on October 21st. Scorn better be in this list. Scorn better be in this list. All right, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is currently in a beta process right now. Um, they've got a little bit of some... Uh, clap back from the uh the community in regards to some of the changes of this game you know and and uh everything i've heard about it right now makes me not really interested in playing it to be honest so i don't know but yeah it's supposed to be releasing on october 28th uh 2k23 dude i haven't played a golf game in a long time i used to love playing some golf games pga tour 2k23 on october 11th through 14th for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, we could watch uh, some of these. We'll just watch some of these. They're not that long. We'll finish up this news uh, segment with, uh, this is Gotham Knights, okay? And we'll Jim go through Gordon and watch them. Right. never gave up on anything. Give everybody a taste of what, what's coming. That's why Gotham City More notable here. titles coming in October, all right? That's why I'm still here. And I've known for a while now that someday, like him, I'd have to work with you.
I've seen plenty of criminals in my career, but nothing could have prepared me for this. Well, well, if it isn't Brat Girl. Gotham City is at her weakest. There's blood in the water, and the sharks are circling. Hey, Clayface. They're all making their move. Is that his name? Play nice. But we aren't going to give up. A storm has risen over Gotham. Nothing can stop it. <laughs> See you at the premiere. I need your help. Your skills. Your knowledge. Rat girl? Your adaptability. That's that rat girl. <laughs> you got my back? Harley! This biopic is based on a true story. My story. Oh, those were tentacles, man. Awesome. The world will feel the cold as I do. I got one last little surprise for you. Frat girl! Come to watch the show, Red Hook. Gotta be Clayface, dude. Nah, right? I'm just here to kick your ass. Pre-order now and get the 233 custom Bat Cycle skin. Cool. All right. That's Gotham Knights. Check out the Modern Warfare 2. Trailer. We got a hit on Hassan. We can't take him in Iran. He's not in Iran. Who do we send? Well, that's where we're in position. Bravo team offloads here. Alpha team stay. A lot of people really are not excited about what happened with what they did with the map. The mini map stuff, you can no longer see where people are shooting from. And people are upset about it. Yeah, no more easy mode. Yeah, I know. I think the thing is like, um, yeah, I think it's a weird pivot to do it in this game, right? Do it in, in Modern Warfare 2, because people were expecting this to be more like old school mo Modern Warfare 2, you know? And to make that change in this game feels like a weird pivot. Pre-order now and get early access to the open beta. Instead of doing it in like the next. Yeah, but I mean, I mean that was kind of my my initial reaction too. Was like, oh, so you can't just like watch the mini map all game long anymore and find out where enemies are. Like, it's a, and that that was the response from Activision as well. Was like, look, what we want people to do is actually rely more on listening to like footsteps and stuff like that listening to where fire is coming from uh or or you know weapon weapon uh sound is coming from stuff like that rather than relying on what you wouldn't normally have <laughs> in in a real life scenario which is a mini map showing pings from where enemy fire is coming from you know and that makes sense to me Very few but people aren't thrilled with it claim to beating tiger head to head Good luck in your rivalry. You're gonna need it.
Cool dots, cool. Way, buddy. Grown men lose their minds if they get yeah, you're good, buddy. Tiger Woods from 50 good, yards away. We had a group of friends back when I was younger. We used to we used to play uh, Tiger Woods back in the day as a drinking game. <laughs> we used to play Tiger Woods as a drinking game and it was like, whoever, whoever, uh, you know, you play like 18 holes or whatever and, and whoever had the best uh, score for that hole didn't have to drink, but however, how many ever strokes behind you were, <laughs> it's like that's how many drinks you had to take. <laughs> oh, dude. Wow. <laughs> Overwatch. Here we go. Uh, Overwatch 2. We've been talking about that this morning. So, uh, releases on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch on October 4th. Here you go. We're in this together. All of us. That was some cake right there. Jeez. Let's get this done. Yeah, we've seen a lot about was a Kariki. Is that her name? Let's Something like that. Probably just showed it. And I wasn't paying attention. Kariko. Kariko. I was close. It's all connected. Impressive. I mean. You know, you, you talk about like the Blizzard stuff. I'm pretty sure, man, they even changed one of the Overwatch characters. They changed the way one of the Overwatch characters looks because it was initially the looks were based on one of the, um, the Blizzard higher ups or, or devs or something that ended up getting ousted because of the uh, some bad stuff that came out about that, if I remember correctly. The world could always use more heroes. This is not the end. Overwatch 2. Uh, Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope. This is apparently the one where the rabbits are going to start speaking? Yeah, we're right on. Yeah, a lot of people like Overwatch, man. Funny enough, it wasn't even supposed to be a, a, a shooter game in the first place. No. No, it was totally being developed as something completely different, and they pivoted in the middle, middle of development and turned into Overwatch. Yeah. Kind of wild, right? What was it supposed to be? I'll look it up. I can't remember exactly what kind of what genre of game it was supposed to be. But yeah, it wasn't supposed to be uh, even. I don't even think even close to what it is nowadays. Well, this is the second uh, iteration. This is like Mario X Tom. This is um, turn based strategy kind of Mario game. It's not. Look, there have been all kinds of different versions of Mario, so. And this is the second time they've done Mario uh, and the Rabbids, so. Yeah. 
Ja. So, October 20th for that. Hold on. Before I forget. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it was supposed to originally be like an MMORPG, I think. Yeah. Um, and then they turned it into Overwatch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so apparently, like, basically what happened is is uh, a portion of what Overwatch is now was originally part of this Project Titan that was originally supposed to be an MMORPG, yeah? Um, and a portion of team of, of the Titan team were inspired by the success of team-based first-person shooters like Team Fortress 2 and the popularity of multiplayer online battle arena games, creating a hero-based shooter which emphasized teamwork. So elements of Overwatch borrow concepts from the canceled Titan project. Yeah, so like... Uh, they were working on this MMORPG. It got kind of shut down. And then they took a lot of these uh, concepts and things that they had been working on in this MMO <laughs> and turned it into what, what is now Overwatch, dude. Kind of kind of wild. Yeah. Cool. Cool, Dots. All right, buddy. Take it easy, man. Have a great day if we don't see you later, all right? Scorn. Knew this would be on here. We are playing this. Desolate. We are playing this next month. Decayed. A grisly nightmare of macabre perception. Greetings. I'm your host, Doug Bradley. Oh, okay. And I invite you to join right, me nuts. as we yeah, explore you too, buddy. Scorn's yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. You too. Maybe we'll see you later, man. Odd forms and Enjoy those modern tapestries. You awake. In the middle of a desolate hellscape filled this game with biomechanical contraptions, part flesh, part machine. An industrial civilization now lying in decay and ruin. A hidden fauna sleeps within the underbelly of the world, wanting nothing more than to be left undisturbed. <sighs> Scorn has been carefully crafted with great attention to detail. Everything is focused on building a specific atmosphere. From a unique organic ecosystem to an unsettling soundscape created by Ethek and Lustmord. Scorn has no dialogue. So well, most of uh, the story which makes sense, dude. I mean, this is H.R. Geiger. Discovering right? the ever present so, symbiotic. This is an H.R. Geiger influenced um, game uh, artwork, the right? And uh, Geiger is, is actually is the, uh, within the, game. the mind uh, artwork influence behind uh, the xenomorphs and all the alien stuff as well. So it, it makes sense that it's uh, a wrong you know, choice. Similar. Be Yep. Deadly. I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into the twisted world of Scorn. The team at Ebsoft very biomechanical kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Uncover the secrets of this unique world as you experience Scorn firsthand this October. Biotech. Are you prepared to unravel Weirdness. your inner self? Within Scorn's world of horror. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 21st of October, baby. We're going to be playing that bad boy. Oh, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, PC and Xbox. Uh, Bayonetta. Bayonetta 3, right? Yeah, Bayonetta 3, uh, October 28th. Here you go. There's a lot of hype around this, I think. There are a lot of people who like Bayonetta. I've never played a Bayonetta game, though. More new faces, I see. <laughs> Good night. You mean those weren't 
<laughs> Dude, that deck must have been waxed up real nice. They're locals. In other words, they're not <laughs> just slipping the slide across that thing, dude. Huh. Oh, she's old up. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> oh, I can only hope, you know. <laughs> you know I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out, one by one. They'll get their hands on enough power to wipe out the whole trinity in a snap. Thank you, Professor. What's this fighting? Broken out of will. All those eyes. Where's that? I think you'd be a bit more perceptive. Now to chat. Some kind of mosquito queen. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too, dude. I was like, what? What is there like some kind of demon insect? Is what I was thinking, man. They're homunculi, man-made bioweapons. Look, we don't have time. If we don't stop them, this world is history, and reality as we know it gets wiped out for good. <laughs> Oh, dude, I do you vaguely expect remember us? that. I want you to find a scientist named Sigurd. He's somewhere in this world. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it does kind of, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know a girl named Viola? She sent me to find you. I believe I know why you're here. Robocop! You're That's Robocop! Have we met before? I think I'd remember you, Riot Girl. No, there's a new Robocop game uh, uh, coming out. Is it him? Lesson one Carelessness will get your tail snipped, kitty. My name is Viola. Music, dude. <laughs> yeah, I would do. We were, we were always like, I was like, what is this? Like, right as I said it, you put that in chat, too. I'm like, what is this music? <laughs> oh, bro. I'm like, we were like, uh, almost always thinking the same thing. It's hilarious. <laughs> Celine Dion. <laughs> uh. All right, cool. Bayonetta three, October twenty eighth. Uh, then they got some more. Uh, we talked about Dakar Desert Rally uh, just the other day. Overwatch two, Death Virus, Let It Die, Near Autumn, at the end of Yora edition. No Man's Sky is coming to Switch on October seventh. Superpower three. No more heroes three. PGA Tour two K twenty three. Lego Brick Tales, Cultic fueled up. Lost Edelons. Uh, Sunday Gold, the Eternal Cylinder, Triangle Strategy looks pretty cool, actually. Uh, WRC Generations, Dragon Ball The Breakers, uh, looks neat as well. No More Heroes 3, Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythm Festival, a Plague Tale Requiem is coming out on October 18th. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, again, I I uh I haven't played a whole uh, you know I haven't really I haven't played any of the bayonetas. I'm just familiar with uh those, so I couldn't really uh you know give input on that. But if that's the case, that feels bad. Marvel Snap, that's the new uh digital TCG coming out for Marvel. Uh, them's fighting herds. <laughs> okay. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection for PC. A Batora, Lost Haven. Uh, Hell is Others. Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Warhammer 40,000 Shooters, Blood and Teeth. Gotham Knights, New Tales from the Borderlands, Persona 5 Royale, Scorn. Victoria 3, Moonshine Incorporated. Saturnalia, Saturnalia. Star Ocean, The Divine Force, Bayonetta 3, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, Factorio. Coming to Switch on October 28th. Uh, Marauders PC. What is Marauders? Why does Marauders sound so familiar? 
and Torchlight Infinite. Unfortunately, Torchlight Infinite we've read about. Looks like it's going to be uh, some cash shop, pay to win kind of stuff, quite possibly in this title, which is quite the opposite of what we've seen in previous Torchlight games. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, that's what we got, guys. That's what we got. That's what we got. Cool. Um, oh, man. What a stretch. Oh, man. Um, thank you, guys. Amazing. Uh, we're going to move on to some Shatterline for the day. But, man, I'm excited for Scarce Ober headed our way. It's going to be good times. Again, um, throughout the next few days, there might be uh, some shortened streams. Not by a lot, but maybe an hour or two. Just to make sure that I've got enough time in the days to, uh, the coming days to work on getting prepared for, uh, Scaretober. Make sure I've got some nice scare, uh, scare alerts set up. Um, and make sure, uh, I've got all the games installed and working well. And, and we're all ready to rock for these, uh, these nice playthroughs. We got headed our way for the horror stuff. Cool. You guys rock. I appreciate you very much. Um, if you're, Checking this content out on YouTube as a VOD and you're enjoying it. See what you can do about coming and hanging out with myself. The rest of this amazing community when we go live at 6 o'clock a.m. CST every single day. We start all of our streams off with video gaming news. Okay. Other than that, you guys just stay healthy, stay safe, be kind to one another. And we'll catch everybody tomorrow for September 29th edition of video gaming news. All right.